to us, who have wanted to get to us at a level that they've been willing to call to make an appointment. And even with us calling to verify that they're able to come, that they are coming, then for them to uh, not show, and, and we're counting the folks that aren't calling to cancel or reschedule, these are people who just don't show. 50% no-show rate is excessively high for healthcare, uh, which typically, you know, most clinics are running more, well below 20%. So this is a big concern to me that there are people who need us, who are trying to get to us, and yet uh, we are you know, running into hurdles of them getting to us. Well, this program, will eliminate the hurdle of transportation. And I understand we are talking about serving the uninsured, um, which is 70% of the population that we take care of at the health departments. Uh, the 30% that do have insurance, the vast majority of those are Medicaid, and we will continue to use the great services of our partners and the Medicaid transportation program uh, for that population, but we are basically talking about providing simple taxi service to get to us, to get to the pharmacy if they need it, and to get home. And that includes our non-medical program. So this is not purely a medical transportation. This is a transportation for those who need public health services, such as WIC, where uh, patients on Medicaid who need to uh, come for WIC services will not have Medicaid transportation eligibility for that. Our The health department transportation service through our federal funding will provide for that. This is a demonstration project. It's a short-term project to help us alleviate uh, the public health crisis of the, the syphilis uh, epidemic and the severe outbreak and uh, increase in the numbers of congenital syphilis. Uh, we have got to be able to get our uh, our folks to the health department for diagnosis and treatment of this condition. And then also, especially for our family planning services. I, I foresee those family planning, uh, our sexually transmitted disease, HIV work, and our WIC work for the uninsured being the highest need for our transportation services. Um, we don't know what the outcome will be. That's why it's a demonstration project, but uh, we have uh, a partnership in place that will provide the service we need at, on a statewide basis and also provide us the data that we need. And I'm excited that we have other potential partners who are interested in uh, helping us with this demonstration project and we, are looking at uh, every opportunity to engage any community partner uh, who is able to provide the deliverables for this program. I'm very, I'm already excited to have uh, other opportunities outside of our current contract. But uh, this is an exciting time for us. This is a major social determinant of health that this program uh, will alleviate and I'm convinced it's gonna improve access to core public health for citizens, especially in our more rural counties, but for all of those who have uh, transportation issues that commonly plague us. So let me turn it over now to Dr. Victor Sutton. He and his team have done Um, it's, when we talk about social determinants, we're really talking about a number of different issues. Uh, it could be health care. It could be uh, transportation. Uh, it could be getting to healthy foods, uh, quality schools, just a number of, of issues that, that determine health, quality health outcomes. So this program is, is really exciting. And, the, and one of the exciting parts is that you don't need the Uber app. You can, you can simply um, reach out to uh, our eight five number uh, seven six seven zero one seven zero and if this is a new appointment if this is an, uh, uh, another appointment that just need to come to provide to get a service at the health department uh, it would take the information that you need and we can set up that particular ride uh, and so in our state 
there's nothing that comes up as it relates to service. This is a statewide program. And so it, it has another benefit as a community economic development benefit. This has the potential to create uh, opportunities and jobs all around our state. So when we have areas where there's uh, low service uh, around this particular transportation project, it'll, it'll, create, um, it'll create and drive the market to help um, find drivers uh, for those particular places where there may be gaps in, in the state. And that's gonna be worked um, with a marketing plan to reach out and help identify. This is a demonstration project. We are gonna be collecting a lot of information. We should be able to know who's accessing our, our uh, services. Um, and more importantly, why are they not accessing the services? When, when we hear about no-show rates, there's a lot of folks that wanna to come to the health department, but, but don't have access to, a, to transportation to get there. And this has been a barrier that we've seen, not only just with us, but across, across the board. So it speaks to a very um, unique um, position that, that we're faced with in trying to address some of these particular areas. So really, really excited about, about the project and looking forward to kicking it off. It's, it's get kicked off today. We are working with various partners as well, uh, looking for new partners. And there's just a really great opportunity to kind of see where we are in moving our state forward because we're, this is all about getting healthier act, outcomes for our state. Great. Thank you. So, Tammy, we're happy to address any questions. Let's see. We don't have any yet. So, if anybody wants to add, type some in. Um, I have been asked to send out your, um, I will type it here, uh, your names and positions. So, I'll do that here in a minute, everybody. I'll say, you know, Dr. Sutton alluded to the fact that this is not just an issue with the health department, but as I talk to my colleagues in the health and human service space in the state, uh, transportation is a barrier for really you know, all the good work that several of our state agencies are doing. And there have been attempts in the past to try to alleviate this problem that really just haven't been successful. But the, you know, the opportunity that we have now is, is a way that we can provide safe, reliable transportation in a way that protects patient privacy uh, and, and to do so not only for clinical services, but for non-clinical services, which has been one of the holdups uh, with uh, other opportunities, and to do it in a, in a way as we complete the demonstration project in a manner that other state agencies with similar issues with transportation for, for their clients would be able to utilize as well. Uh, this is a short-term contract. The demonstration project will be from now until the end of June, and, uh, and hopefully we'll have enough data before the end of the project that we'll be able to develop a, a formal RFP for proper procurement and, uh, and be able to see exactly what the needs of the program are going to be long-term. And I would just add that, you know, to participate in this program, you have to be 18 years of older and with a, with max drivers of, of four, you can, four can, can attend um, on that particular visit. So we're not talking about transporting the elderly or disabled. We're not talking about transporting uh, pregnant Medicaid moms or babies or Medicaid children. You know, we're talking about the, the uninsured. And the biggest need that we're looking at is in that space, 18 to 64 mainly, who do not have insurance and also have significant uh, stress with transportation issues. And it's not uncommon, y'all, for transportation to fall through at the last minute for our folks and causes them to miss their family planning appointment, which can cause a woman to lose access or be late on her contraceptive refills or uh, take uh, a woman longer who's worried that she may have sexually transmitted disease to get to us and allow that to advance further than it should. So these are all um, issues of critical importance to public health, and I'm really proud and excited to roll this out. So Heather, um, we may have answered your question here. Uh, is this program only supposed to last a year? If so, would MSTH try to extend the program? for another year if y'all see benefits from this service? 
Yeah, I can promise you, if we see the benefits, I think we will. Uh, I mean, we're we're already already working on long term sustainability, and so that really does not give me much heartburn. Uh, you know, one thing right now I can't tell you is how many rides there are going to be needed and how much that's going to cost. Uh, we have a total of one million dollars for a maximum amount that we can use during the contract period, uh, but we're we already have plans for long-term sustainability, even if there you know, aren't federal grant opportunities like they are right now. Uh, but I, I'm confident that as we demonstrate the, the need and the effectiveness, then federal partners will be even more inclined to fund this, this type of good work. Um, I'm commonly asked, well, you know, how will uh, Uber work in you know, Tallahatchie County, if there's not an Uber driver. What I say is, well, I, I don't know if there is or not, but um, there may not be one today, but as this program develops, becomes more robust, uh, certainly if there are other uh, agencies or other entities that can take advantage of uh, the same contract, I can promise you there will be more than one Uber driver in Tallahatchie County, where today there's not one. So that's where Dr. Sutton's talking about economic development. And we are... Uh, we are engaging in uh, contract relationships with others um, who can provide this type of really non-medical, not just non-emergent, but just really largely non-acute medical needs uh, and who have the same ability to generate the data for us, provide HIPAA compliant privacy protections for our folks and be safe and reliable um, you know, I'm engaged in conversations now with, uh, you know, with companies that I think will be uh, good partners and will allow us to look at different models through the demonstration period. So, um, you know, this is, this is a situation where I'd say we do not need to let perfect be the enemy of good. And if we wait until we know we can cover every county every day, then we may be here another 20 years. But I'm convinced if we kick this off with our current partner, uh, which is Uber, and develop the other partnerships, and then as we properly procure it in a non-emergency basis uh, next year, that we will have you know, really comprehensive coverage in a manner to, to serve everyone in Mississippi. And I want to remind you the mission of the Mississippi State Department of Health is to protect and advance the health, well-being, and safety of everyone in Mississippi. And I like to tack on, my team will tell you, I like to tack on, that means no exceptions. And here is an opportunity for us to fulfill our mission with no exceptions. And I'm excited about this. We have a question from WTVA. How is this going to run in North Mississippi? So, um, you know, with our current Uber contract, and I'm, I'm talking, I'm, let me let you do it. I'm talking too much. No, no, you're doing fine. <laughs> yeah, it's going to run in North Mississippi like it's going to run around the state. If there's an appointment that you have with the health department, you'll call the number to set that, set that appointment, and you'll be asked whether or not you need transportation services. And, with, and the information will be collected, and, and, and we'll go from there. If there's an opportunity that you need to come for a non- uh, to, to Dr. Edney's point, a non-medical service, you'll call this number and we will go from there. So it's going to work the same across the state for services around transportation. It's going to be that one call. You don't have to deal with an app. Um, you know, you don't have to call the transportation company. You call our 855 number and our, our good team will set up the arrangements. And as we develop, you know, more than one partner, then uh, oftentimes it'll be looking at who, which partner can best serve. And perhaps, you know, it may be in Alcorn County, who has, you know, who can best serve our folks in, in Northeast Mississippi, who can do, who has better coverage in the Delta, who has better coverage on, on the Gulf Coast. And that's why I'm excited about um, others wanting to, to join us and, and, realizing the importance of this uh, 
need and who are wanting to help us alleviate this need. And everybody knows this, there's not big money here. You know, and I'm happy to work with anyone who uh, is able to provide the deliverables that, that I stated and can do it at a rate that's sustainable. So we're talking about taxi rates or lower. Right, and and to that point, um, we did get some soft launches, and and the and the and the, um, the rates were very reasonable. Um, and and we will. Um, you don't have to have an Uber app, and you will, if you set up the, your appointment, you will get a text or a phone call reminding you of that. Um, so those those that information is is really key, and to and to the relationships that we have, all this is HIPAA compliant. And 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 that then the information is, is uh, protected. And to the question, you know, what's the estimate on what we're potentially looking in terms of numbers? The potential is to double the number of patients we serve at the health department. Because right now, when you look at a full schedule and at the health department, you know, we intentionally are overbooking because we know right now half our folks won't be able to show. Um, and so we are potentially looking at doubling our health department numbers, which I would love to see. Um, we don't know, though. And that's why the demonstration project is so important, is to show us you know, what, what that need is going to be and, and really what the uptake is going to be. And with any demonstration project, it, you know, we may be surprised with the extremes. It may have take much lower than we anticipate. It may blow the roof off way more than we anticipate. Um, and you know, it may be that a million dollars won't last through the demonstration project. You know, if that if that happens, I see that as a win. You know, because it shows that our our people need this service, and I just have to. You know, it becomes my problem to find the resources to meet that need. I'm just excited that now we have the opportunity to meet the need like we never had before. So we're not talking about, you know, buying, uh, you know, 500 vans to deploy around the state. Uh, we're not talking about expanding the scope of state government by hiring a lot of drivers around the state. We're talking about using private partnerships to help us alleviate uh, social determinants of health that we, we truly have to work on. And I love that approach. Private public partnerships are powerfully effective as we saw in the pandemic. And this is where we want to use the example of success and those previous partnerships to attack another problem that our state has. TV would like to know, will there be a limit on how many rides a person can take? No, they have services that, that require them to come to the health department and they'll be eligible for transportation. <clears throat> um, Heather Harrison from Mississippi Free Press. This program is statewide. How will the small towns and communities get people to drive for Uber? Will this service be able to work the same in every county? Yes, I think Dr. Eddie spoke to that. Um, we're, we're, this demonstration project is going to give us the opportunity to, to look at that data. Um, there, we may think, and what we found in the soft launch is that where we thought there may be some gaps, there was actually service there. Um, like, like any other Uber service, you know, sometimes you may get a ride in two minutes. Sometimes you may get a, a ride that comes in 10 minutes. But with these being appointments, it, it gives us the luxury to, to plan ahead. So it's not last minute type of uh, appointments. So that's that's the unique uh, feature that we have. But I think there's there is a place for some opportunity where there may be gaps to uh, to better have have better service or increase capacity around the state where there may be opportunities um, for for Uber drivers. WLBT would like to know what other transportation services have reached out. If none. Uh, if none others have officially yet, how will you all handle that if they do? Yes, we um, I'm in really discussions with an association of non 
emergency medical transportation companies who also provide some non-medical uh, transportation. And um, I see a great opportunity. I, I'm not going to name names because I, you know with this. I mean, they they need the opportunity to look at at what our needs are and really what our resources are and make sure it's going to be a, an economic fit for them. Uh, but I can tell you they're partners that I trust and uh, would be very happy to work with if you know if it will work out. Um, and and I'm grateful for the opportunity of, of some other partners with, within the state. And Dankins from the Clarion Ledger, is there an estimate on how many people the department is looking to potentially serve throughout through the program? Yeah, but, and uh, to my previous comments, we just don't know right now, but the demonstration project is gonna tell us. And I've just, um, I know the potential is very high just based on our no-show rate and, and, and the feedback that we, we get from the folks that we serve, uh, but you never know until you do the project. WTVA says, who are the partners in North Mississippi? Um, this is a little off topic. Also, why sexually transmitted disease is a major concern for MSDH. Um, and we can do that off camera. So. No, I'm it actually applies to the problem. You know, the... the uh, the reason this is an emergent issue is because of the syphilis crisis. And if you're not aware, we have an explosion. And this is a national issue. It's not just a Mississippi issue. But unfortunately, um, this is yet another thing that we're leading the way in a negative outcome. And the, the, out, the explosion of syphilis that has occurred over the last three years has spilled over into our population of women of childbearing age, which has caused a severe increase in the number of pregnant women infected with syphilis, causing the, the uh, fetus to become infected. And the number of babies infected with syphilis has gone out the roof in Mississippi over the last three years, particularly. Uh, we're looking at more than a 1,000% increase in congenital syphilis. And this is contributing to uh, increased costs for taking care of these babies. These babies have to stay in the hospital, in the NICU, uh, an additional 10 days to receive treatment if they survive. And this is, this is causing increased uh, fetal death, it's causing increased infant death, uh, and it's preventable. And so the health department is you know, the focal point of diagnosing and managing sexually transmitted diseases as part of our core public health work and uh, getting control of the syphilis outbreak is critically important. And one of the problems we've been seeing are the, the difficulty patients have getting to the health department to get the, the care that they need. So uh, this is specifically directed at that, but it's gonna benefit all the good work that we do including our non-medical work. I don't have any last questions. Does anybody have anything they'd like to wrap it up? Um, yeah, just that we're really excited about this demonstration project. Uh, as we feel like it's gonna be really good for our state it's gonna, and it's gonna give us a lot of good information to go on. We have one number that you can call to receive, um, to get that appointment scheduled. But really excited. And again, we just want to keep pushing our mission for the health for the health department forward, and 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 deal with these issues that we have in our state. And I want to personally again thank Dr. Vicki Johnson, who is really Dr. Johnson and her team that did most of the work. I let Dr. Sutton take some of the credit. Um, I get none of the credit except saying yes. Let's let's do this. Um, I'm very grateful to Dr. Sutton who is directly responsible uh, for overseeing the, the work of our field services and including our county health department work. And, you know, this is a great example of our mindset at the Mississippi State Department of Health right now. And that is, there are solutions for every problem that we face. 
And y'all, if we continue to do things the same old way, we've always done it, we will continue to get the same old results. So this is an example of innovative thinking and um, teamwork, public-private partnerships, uh, coming together to serve the most vulnerable of our state and making sure that we protect and advance the health, well-being, and safety of everyone in Mississippi with no exceptions. Thank you all for your time. We are really grateful for your interest.